Today is the fifth and final day of our meal plan week. Now I wrote up a grocery list with everything you need for all the dishes we've made this week to, to take the guesswork out of shopping and cooking. Now the list is posted online along with the recipes after we make them on the show. And since we've been doing such a great job cooking up a storm every single night all week, I'm finishing off this week with a sweet little treat. And I'm very excited about it. We are making my PB and J and oat tart. I'm very excited. Now, this recipe here is a total showstopper. The best thing about this is I can convince myself because of the oats and the peanuts and the jam is that it's breakfast and that's my favorite type of dessert. Something you can have after dinner and then the next morning have a little slice and you're good to go. Now, this is a really, really great tart. It's kind of inspired by this Icelandic tart that's I cannot say the name, but it's called like happy marriage cake. It's like an oat, which honestly, what a, what a delight. A cake for a happy marriage? Yes, please. Um, but it's a little bit more like a pie. It's really, really nice. It's almost like a cross between like an oatmeal cookie, kind of sort of a tart, kind of a pie, and a little bit cakey. And it is totally, totally delicious. So we're gonna get started on the wet ingredients for this recipe. So in this bowl here, I've got three quarters of a cup of unsalted butter at room temperature. I'm just gonna give this a little bit of a beat just to get it going. Now, if you wanted to have a little bit of a workout today, you could feel free to do this by hand. Since this is like a heartier dough, it's not, um, it doesn't need to be creamed into like light and fluffy territory. So honestly, doing it by hand, not that hard, but like we've cooked all week. I'm taking the easy road. All right, now into there, I'm going in with three quarters of a cup of brown sugar. I'm using brown sugar because that's gonna give a really nice chew and also a nice molasses-y flavor, which I absolutely love. So that's a quarter cup, going in with another half. Add that right on in. And then just give that a beat until it is combined. Again, typically if you're making something like a cookie, you wanna cream this mixture. And basically creaming a mixture doesn't have to do with adding cream to it. It means you're basically beating air into the butter and sugar mixture, helping that sugar dissolve a little bit, giving a little bit more lift and lightness into the recipe. This doesn't need to be light though. We just need it to be nice and smooth. So that is looking good to me. So now I'm gonna go in with an egg. We just need one egg for this dish, which is a total delight, because if you live in my house, we go through eggs very fast. My husband Aaron probably eats like, honestly, like five eggs a day, I don't understand. It's wild. <laughs> They're delicious. Sorry to put you on blast, Aaron, but it's true. All right, now into there to flavor this up, I'm going in with a little bit of vanilla extract. You could also do almond extract, but we're doing peanut butter, so we're sticking with vanilla to make it a really nice flavor. Just about a half a teaspoon of that. I'm a free pour when it comes to vanilla. I like living on the edge. Um, I measure most things in life, not vanilla. All right, now give that a little bit of a beat just to bring everything together and get that egg incorporated. I always add the egg after I've got the sugar and the butter incorporated. And if I were making like a double batch of this, you add the eggs in one at a time because butter is obviously mainly fat. Eggs are obviously mainly water. And if you've ever made like a salad dressing before, you know those two things don't like getting along. So beating it in after each addition helps you kind of emulsify that egg in. All right, that is looking beautiful and perfect. So now I'm gonna get to work on the dry ingredients. And we are using another handy dandy tool for this. I have a food processor. If you don't have a food processor, if you just have like one of those mini chop ones, that'll work. Even a blender will work, but we do need to get some stuff finely chopped up. So this is definitely handy. So the first thing I'm gonna add in is my oats. So I want about a cup of oats into this food processor. I'm using whole rolled oats. They're the most like, or the least processed in terms of the rolled oat variety. If all you have is quick cooking, that'll work as well. But a cup of those go straight on into that food processor. And essentially what I'm doing here is I'm gonna make almost like an oat flour situation. So give that a little bit of a pulse, maybe eight to 10 pulses. Five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right, that looks good. You basically want it to be chopped up. So there's just little bits of oats still in there. It's a little bit floury, looking beautiful. But now I'm gonna start adding in the rest of my dry ingredients. So into there, I'm going in with a cup of flour. You can use any type of flour you want here. I'm going all purpose. You could use whole wheat if you want. You could even use your favorite all purpose gluten-free blend if you're using gluten-free oats. That would work perfectly in here. Cause you're not looking for like a bready texture. It's just nice. All right, now for a little bit of lift, just to give it a bit of puffiness, we're going in with half a teaspoon of baking powder. Baking powder is gonna rise a little bit when you first mix it together, and then when it hits the heat of the oven, just give you the softest little pfft. So it's kind of like pillowy, which is a delight. Now to season that, I'm going in with half a teaspoon of cinnamon, because I love a little, oops, I got cinnamon in my baking powder. That's okay, we'll fix that later. You know, things happen in life. <laughs> 
It's very obvious if you look at the overhead camera that I made a mistake. <laughs> Didn't even have to say anything, Mary. You could have hit it, but I'm not good at lying. All right. Now I'm gonna go in with a little bit of salt as well. Just about, I'd say maybe a quarter teaspoon into there. Give that a pulse just to combine, to get all those ingredients, oops, that's backwards, nice and mixed together. Perfect, now we're further chopping those oats, but now I wanna add in one more thing that's gonna give that crunch, that delicious nuttiness. So we're going in with some peanuts. We need about half a cup of, I'm using roasted peanuts, you can use whatever you got hanging around. If you got some salty ones, obviously pull back on the salt in here. But again, about half a cup of those go straight on in. And this is gonna give you like crunchy peanut butter vibes. We've got the oats for the bready vibe, the crunchy peanuts. Now pulse that a few times just to chop up those nuts. I'm not giving you a number, we're just gonna do it till it's chopped. <laughs> All right, looks good to me. Perfect. Now that's essentially what you're looking for. Basically we've made like an oaty, peanutty kind of flour mixture. So I'm gonna go into the wet with that. Just dump it on it. Oh, it smells like peanut butter. That is a very good thing. If you are allergic to peanuts or something like that, you can feel free to swap them out. Again, you could do almond, but I like a like richer nut, something like a cashew. Oh my gosh, would be delicious in this. So I'm just gonna beat that together to bring everything all nice and creamy. And this batter comes together in no time flat. This isn't like a traditional pastry. It's more like kind of a cookie, kind of like those, um, I'm trying to think of a name that isn't the brand name. You know those fig cookies? Like fig last name? Those, it's kind of had those texture. All right, that's looking beautiful. Now that is it. This is it for the crust and the topping. We get to divide it up, so it's kind of doing double duty, which I always like on a Friday. But I've got here a nine inch removable bottom tart pan. Now if you don't have one of these, that's totally fine. You could do this in a classic nine inch uh, pie plate would work really well. I'm gonna give it a little bit of a spritz with some nonstick cooking spray just to make sure it comes out nicely. And then with about three quarters of, a, uh, of this batter, I'm gonna add that into the bottom here. So just plop it in. This is not an exact measurement at all. Just pretty easy breezy. And then using your hands, if it's getting a little sticky, feel free to use a little bit of water. But you just wanna kind of press this into the bottom and along up the sides of that pan. Now, one of my main tips, anytime you're putting something kind of sticky or working with something kind of sticky, have a little bowl of just tap water on the side because that's gonna make it so it doesn't stick to your hands. That way you can press it on in and not end up with just half the dough sticking to your fingers. Well, delicious, not necessarily where we want it to go. All right, so that is looking absolutely beautiful. So now I wanna fill this. I'm gonna use a jam, cause I'm not gonna ask you to make jam, so we just bought it at the grocery store. You can use, literally, if you, if you followed the grocery list, you've got some, if you just have some hanging around in that door of your fridge, and you're like, I just want this jam to go away. Make this tart, it's gonna be perfect. You need about a cup to a cup and a half of that jam, and you just wanna spread it into the bottom of this shell that you've made. So I'm just gonna tip that right on in. I'm using strawberry today. You could go like classic old school and do like grape jam if you're feeling like very old timey. Also, know it's delicious, the peanut butter, apricot jam, very fancy, I know. Even like apricot, if you did switch out the peanuts for cashews, fancy. Going a little less fancy, but very delish. All right, now just spread that jam out just to cover the bottom of that beautiful shell. So just as easy as that. If you wanted to, you could also fill this with apples or something, but again, this is way easier than that. And then we've got the other quarter, the remaining quarter of that dough still in this bowl. So what I'm gonna do with this is I'm actually gonna dot it over the top and use it kind of almost like a, a cookie-y crumbly topping. So just grab some of it just a little handful. Again, with wet fingers helps out. And then just kind of dot it over top. You don't need to spread it out. It melts beautifully. It almost looks like, um, like a cobbler, like cobblestones of that beautiful peanutty, oaty topping. So just pop it down. This is my favorite thing. Something that can double as a crust and a topping. What a delight. Saving time, saving energy. Definitely on a Friday. All right, perfect. Now, since I'm using a removable bottom tart pan for this recipe, I do wanna pour, uh, transfer this onto a sheet pan. Because that bottom does remove, kind of like if you're using a springform pan, some of that fat and butter can actually leak out. So pop it onto a rimmed baking sheet, and this needs to go into a 350 degree oven for about 35 to 40 minutes. It's gonna puff up a little bit. Those top little pools are gonna kind of melt into that jam, and you're gonna end up with something that looks like this, which is so cute. Like, look at that little 
little baby. So cute. All right, now if, if you used a pie plate, maybe you don't have a removable bottom tart pan at home, I get it, not everybody does. You could totally do this in a nine inch classic pie plate. You wouldn't need to unmold it, that way you just slice it in the pie plate, serve it like a normal pie. But if you do use the removable bottom kind, this is my favorite way to kind of get this out of here. Set this aside, grab some sort of tall vessel. I'm gonna use my brown sugar container. Anything that's kind of narrower than the outside, pop this on top and then say a little prayer. And then fingers crossed. Yeah. Right? And that's why we use non-stick cooking spray. Now if you want to, there is the little metal kind of bottom here. If you want to, I don't know if I'm gonna, we can try to shimmy it off. Nope, we're just serving it right on there. <laughs> Guess what? Nobody can see it until you cut your first slice and then they're just happily eating a PB and J and oat tart. All right, with that obviously on its own for a breakfast, Oh my gosh, what a treat. But I like a little bit of ice cream with my dessert. So we've just got some vanilla ice cream here to match up with this beautiful, beautiful dessert. Even something with a little bit of cinnamon in it would be amazing. But now we get to cut into this beautiful tart. It slices like a dream. It's firm enough that it holds. You could hold it like a little piece of pizza if you wanted to. I wouldn't mind doing that. Get that little underneath, pull her on up. Like, look at that little tart. Isn't that so cute? Beautiful. All right, pop them on. Little bit of some vanilla ice cream right on top. And you, my friends, have got the cutest dessert I've ever seen. <laughs> Truly, this like brings me back to elementary school days. Again, if you can't do peanuts, cashews would be amazing. I luckily can do peanuts, so let's give it a taste. Okay. Oh my God. <laughs> Guys, you have to make this, it's so good. Crunchy peanuts, those chewy oats, that is a total showstopper. Hey, Mary here. What did you think? Drop your comments below and don't forget to like and subscribe for more of the good stuff.